This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Today, Donald Trump struggles to pay his legal costs, Russia reels from a major terrorist attack, and the US and Japan plan to strengthen their military alliance. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Monday the 25th of March 2024. It's no secret that running for president costs a lot of money. And it's money, or rather a lack of it, that might be Donald Trump's biggest obstacle to taking back the White House this November. Today, Monday, is the deadline for Trump to pay a more than $450 million bond stemming from a New York civil fraud judgment that his lawyers say paying is a practical impossibility. If he fails to pay up, New York's Attorney General Letitia James could begin the process of trying to seize Trump's assets, everything from bank accounts to property to helicopters to cash. To explain the situation a bit more, what Trump needs to pay is an appeal bond. Basically, as Trump is appealing the judgment that found him liable for years of financial fraud in New York, he must pay the equivalent of the court-ordered penalty, plus a bit more for interest, to ensure that he can and will pay the penalty if his appeal fails. Usually, defendants will secure financial backing from an insurance company to pay this bond by putting up collateral. However, Trump has reportedly failed to secure backing from dozens of major insurers or bond providers. As for a bond of such a big size, they want liquid collateral, i.e. cash or stocks, not things like real estate. Now, despite Trump's lawyers arguing in court that he could not post a bond of that size, Trump took to social media platform Truth Social last week to post, in all caps, through hard work, talent and luck, I currently have almost $500 million in cash, a substantial amount of which I intended to use in my campaign for president. He then went on to accuse the New York judge of deliberately trying to take this money away from his campaign. Despite generally holding a polling lead over President Joe Biden, Trump is bleeding money on his legal issues and is falling behind on fundraising. According to recent filings, the Trump campaign entered March with $33 million cash in hand, while Biden had more than double that with $71 million. In the month of February alone, Biden's campaign raised more than $21 million, while Trump raised just short of $11 million. Now, it's not all bad news for Trump, though, as he may soon get billions of dollars richer after shareholders approved a plan to make the Trump Media and Technology Group, which owns Truth Social, a publicly traded company through a merger with Digital World Acquisition Corp. However, Trump won't actually be able to sell any of his 79 million shares for six months, meaning he won't be able to access this windfall for some time. Plus, Digital World's share price is volatile, and it remains to be seen if the lofty valuation is sustained. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine, or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Last Friday night, Moscow was the site of Russia's worst terrorist attack for more than two decades, when gunmen opened fire at the Crocus City Hall concert venue, killing at least 137 people. According to the Kremlin, 11 people have been detained, including four suspects. President Vladimir Putin told Russians in a televised address on Saturday that the security services had captured these four suspects as they were trying to flee to Ukraine. Identified as citizens of Tajikistan, all four appeared to have been beaten, and one was brought to court in a wheelchair on Sunday. Putin did not directly accuse Ukrainian authorities for being involved in the attacks, but alluded that a window had been prepared for the men to cross the border, despite not offering any evidence to support his claim. Ukraine has denied any role, and instead the Islamic State has claimed responsibility, and even released body cam footage of the attack. The US Embassy in Moscow had earlier issued a public warning on its website on March the 7th of a planned terrorist attack in Moscow. Putin, however, responded to these statements as provocative and described them as attempts to destabilise Russian society. The White House has said the US strongly condemns these attacks and that ISIS is a common terrorist enemy that must be defeated everywhere. We have a full video coming out on TLDR News EU on Tuesday covering the attack, Russia's response and more. In other news, the US and Japan will strengthen their military alliance to counter the growing threat from China, according to several official sources. It'll be the biggest upgrade to the two countries' joint security alliance since they signed a mutual defence treaty in 1960. The new plans will include a restructuring of the US military command in Japan, 
increased exercises and strategic planning between the two nations, and the possibility of a new US military joint task force that would be attached to the US Pacific Fleet in Hawaii. The US is also reportedly considering appointing a four-star commander with more operational authority to oversee its forces in Japan, which Tokyo has been pushing for for a long time. Japan has increased its defence spending in the last few years, as it sees regional security as an urgent issue, given both China's and North Korea's strong presence in the Indo-Pacific. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida wants to establish the Joint Command headquarters before the end of March 2025, and will travel to meet US President Joe Biden next month, with the new plans to be unveiled at the White House on April the 10th. Now to Slovakia, where presidential elections are well on their way, in what's been described as Slovakia's choice between Russia and the West and authoritarianism versus the rule of law. The first round, which ended yesterday, saw the pro-EU former foreign minister Ivan Korchok score a surprise victory. Korchok easily defeated Peter Pellegrini, a key ally of populist and pro-Russian prime minister Robert Fico. This isn't great news for the populist prime minister, as these elections are a chance for Fico to secure his power and pass his controversial democracy-eroding laws. While the presidency in Slovakia plays a largely ceremonial role, the president is the top commander of the armed forces, appoints judges, and most importantly has the ability to veto changes in legislation and can ask constitutional courts to question laws. This has been essential in counterbalancing Fico's power. The incumbent president, Susanna Chapotova, a fierce opponent of Fico, has been responsible for blocking multiple attempts by Fico to make changes. In February, Chapotova suspended Fico's criminal code overhaul, which aimed to make it harder to investigate and punish corruption. But with his key ally Pellegrini in office, Fico would have the chance to remove this major check on his power. Now, it seems things aren't going to plan for Fico, with Korchok's surprise victory. However, the race is not over yet, and the second round is set for April the 6th, so make sure to keep an eye out for the final election results over on TLDR News EU. Our final Easter Bunny-themed story for today is that the population of brown hares in Germany has reached a new high. The number of brown hares, also known as European hares, rose to 19 per square kilometre in 2023, up from 16 per square kilometre the year before, thanks to last year's dry spring. The animals are found particularly in the lowlands of northwest Germany, where they hide in fallow land, flowers and hedges to hide from predators. Their numbers have been declining across Europe since the 1980s, partly due to a rise in predation, but also due to the development of agricultural land. Now, understanding exactly what has or is going to happen here can be a little tricky, requiring you to evaluate lots of information from different, often partial, sources. It would be sensible then to begin improving your critical thinking skills so that you can keep sharp and better understand what's going on. And, well, our sponsor Brilliant.org can help you do just that. Brilliant is the online learning platform that's designed specifically to teach you everything from maths, data analysis, programming, and AI from the ground up. You don't need a fancy degree or to have dedicated hundreds of hours to studying any of these. All you need is a device with an internet connection and a few spare minutes a day. And with your spare few minutes, you'll learn by actually doing, with Brilliant providing hands-on lessons that help you play around with concepts, a method that has been shown to be six times more effective than just watching lectures. What makes this even better is that this content is created by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft and more. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, click on the link in the description. And that way you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.